Section 8.3, Example 4. The U.S. Department of Energy surveys households to obtain data on monthly fuel expenditures for household vehicles. So how much money are they spending on fuel or gas for their car? Um, so we have a random sample of 27 households. So N equals 27. Um, so a random sample of 27 household vehicles yields a mean. So since this is a sample X bar of 158.90, and a standard deviation, or S, of 42.75. Um, so let's do the requirements. My sample size is 27, so I don't quite make that cutoff of 30, but I do make the cutoff of 15. So we just need the data to not be severely skewed. So we don't need normal for the population, just at least not severely cute, skewed. So we'll hope, for now, we'll graph if we're doing um, if we're on stat crunch, but I must hope that the population is not severely skewed. So that way X bar will be normal. So the population can be a different shape than X bar if my sample size is big enough. So let's go ahead and find a 95% confidence interval for the average month monthly fuel expenditures of all households. You'll notice when we're in mean land, we have numerical data. So that's another way to tell the difference. Right, how much money people spend on gas is numerical. Versus proportions were categories, right? Yes or no, heads or tails. So mean land will be numerical data. So we already have X bar and S and N, you probably wrote those above. So 158.90 is X bar, 42.75 for S and n is 27. So let's go ahead and find the t-score. So we're gonna put 95% in the middle, which means we have 025 left over because we have five and five. We have five and divide by two. 025, 025. It's the t-curve, so we need degrees of freedom, which will be 27 minus one, or 26. So we're going to go over to that score, that table. We're going to go to the 025 column and the 26 row. So 025, 025, and we'll go down to 26. So it looks like they meet at 2.056. So that's my T-score. So let's go ahead and plug into the formula. So X bar, because we're in mean land, T plus, plus or minus T, S over root N. No proportions, don't mix and match. So if you feel like you're ready to plug in without me, pause the video. Otherwise, um, let's plug in. 158.90 plus or minus 2.056 times 42.75 all over square root 27. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that plus or minus piece into my calculator. 2.056 times 42.75 divided by square root of 27. We get 16, and I'll go to two decimal places, so 915 rounds up to 92. I just make these match. We should be consistent once we round. So the mean will be in the interval of 158.9 minus 62.92, which is 141.98, up to 175.82. So the mean is somewhere in between 141.98 and 175.82. So let's interpret that. Interpreting is probably more important than just mindlessly writing numbers down. So we are 95% confident, or you could say I am, right? But since we're doing this one together, we are 95% confident that the average or mean, I'll use the word average, monthly fuel expenditures, just a fancy way of sending, saying what we're spending on fuel, of all households, all and average are important words in this sentence. 
So this isn't a single household, right? This is the average of all households is somewhere in between. $141 and 98 cents and 175 and 82 cents. So we don't know the exact average because we only had a sample, but we're pretty confident that the average is within this interval. And then let's make another interpretation. Can we say based on our interval that we're 95% confident that the mean monthly fuel expenditure is greater than 150? So visually 141.98 up to 175.82. Anything in this interval is possible. That's all we know. We don't know the value, just anything in there is possible. Um, so 150 is somewhere in between. So are we confident that it's greater than 150? Um, no, because there's some values in our interval that are less than 150. So no, because the average could be, and it could be, it doesn't, we're not saying it is. Um, and so I could say it's 142 or 143 or 144 or 145, right? Something in the interval that's less than 150. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's try one more, example five. So a large company is interested in the average length of telephone calls made by its employees. So they randomly sample 837 calls. So we have a nice big sample, n equals 837. And then they find that the mean duration of a phone call, or x bar, is 3.872 minutes, and they have a standard deviation of 4.0539 minutes. So let's comment on the requirements before we actually make an interval. So my sample size is nice and big. I don't care about the shape at all. So since I have 837, which is greater than or equal to 30, the requirements are met. We can use the normal curve. No hoping, the requirements are met. All right, so let's go ahead and find a confidence interval. So step one is already done. We don't need to use one bar stat because n X bar and S were already given. N was 837, right? You probably already wrote this down. X bar was 3.872 and S was 4.0539. Rather than raw data, we were already given these values. So that saves us a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and find the T-score. We're gonna find a 99% confidence interval for the true mean duration of all phone calls. So we're looking at mean land. We'll put 99 in the middle which means we have 005 and 005, because we have 1% left over. And when we divide by two, we get 005. All right, so we have the T curve, so we need degrees of freedom, because we're in mean land. So it'll be 837 minus one, or 836, which I have a feeling is not on the table, but let's check it out. So we'll go to the 005 column, which is the last one. We're gonna go down. There's definitely no 837. So 837 would be in between. And so we learned we can't go over, so we have to use 500. So we will use 2.586. So 1,000 is going over even though it's closer. So 2.586. All right, and so we'll use that same formula, x bar plus or minus t times s over root n. And why don't you start plugging in? We get 3.872 plus or minus T is 2.586, S is 4.0539, all over square root of 837. And so 3.872 plus or minus, 
let's find that second piece. So just type the plus or minus piece on the calculator. And I get 0.362. I'm going to go with three decimal places to be consistent. And so the mean is in the interval 3.872 minus 0.362. So 3.51 up to... 3.872 plus 0.362, 4.234. So we're pretty sure the average length of phone calls is somewhere in this interval. How confident are we? We're 99% confident. So we are 99% confident for our interpretation that the average, because we're not talking about a single phone call, we're talking about the average, length of all of the phone calls at the company is somewhere in this interval. Is somewhere between 3.51 and 4.234 minutes. So again, we don't know the true value because um, we don't possibly have the time to take every single phone call at this company, but with our sample of 837, we can make a pretty good estimate that the average length is somewhere between 3.51 and 4.234. And then back to our big question of the chapter, how close is X bar to mu? So our X bar was 3.872. How close do we think we are to the real value? And that again is the plus minus piece. So we think we're within plus or minus 0.362 minutes of the real value, right? How close is the margin of error? And so as that number gets smaller, right, as our margin of error gets smaller, we're making better and better predictions.